timeless classic prim looks from my boudoir. And as always, please stick around until the end for the mini photo shoot that I provide for you at the conclusion of every episode. And in today's episode, we're going to be styling and talking to you briefly about the history of denim. Yes, I am styling three looks for you today, all in denim. So let's see, we have our standard traditional dark wash. We have um, a faded black wash. And then I have like a copper metallic number for you that I, I really think you're going to like highlighted with some um, Asian uh, Chinese influence to it. But I really wanted to read to you first a little history of denim. As you know, as I've said in previous episodes, I absolutely love history. Um, I think I would have been like a female Robert Langdon from Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code, you know, um, because I have such a love for history, religious history in particular, as it relates to music, because I studied musicology in university as a music student. Uh, my emphasis was opera and um, jazz, but I also had a minor in history, musicology, as well. So yes, yes, let's get to it. Let me just read this for you. I didn't want to get it wrong because I find it fascinating. And because I have a love for Italy in the first place, you know I do because of my Italian handbags. Um, I love the connection to Italy where denim is concerned. So let me read this to you. The origins of jeans and denim. So where does the word jeans come from? Uh, it dates back to 1567 with the introduction of the word Genoese or jeans to describe the tough twill trousers worn by merchant sailors from the Italian coast of the city Genoa, which I have visited many times and performed many times as an opera singer. Um, where does the word denim come from? Denim dates back to the 17th century. It's created in Nimes, France. Um, Serge de Nimes was a cotton twill cloth made of wool and silk, later became known simply as denim. So denim is spelled D-E-N-I-M-E-S and then shortened because it's in France, um, but shortened to denim as we know it today. And it has, of course, become part of the popular uh, cultural fashionable wear. Um, of course, it uh, really seeped into, um, I would say, mainstream main day wear in the 50s with, um, you know, industry um, production in warehouses. It became very comfortable um, to wear because you could hide the dirt. You didn't see the dirt wearing denim. And of course, it was rugged and tough and very difficult to damage or destroy until you wore them for some time. So yes, that is a brief history of uh, where we get denim from and by extension, the word jeans, right? Isn't that cool? Yay, that's your little um, historical tidbit for this episode. So moving on, let's get to our three looks all in denim. The first look that we have for you today is I, I think it's so, so beautiful. I've not seen uh, denim, this done to denim before. And it, I'm sure it has been, but I myself have not actually seen denim done in this fashion. It's like a metallic copper look. Look at that. These are from Mango, M-A-N-G-O, the store Mango. Aren't these beautiful, right? Look at that. And it has this beautiful, again, metallic copper sheen to it. And surprise, I actually have the matching bustier that goes to it. Now, I hope you really like this set. Isn't it just stunning? Just beautiful. And the bustier actually zips up on the side here, right? And I actually put um, some little tabs in the back of my denim um, 
for my other looks because as many African-American women will attest to, we have a problem with jeans that do not fit our body types very well because we generally have, of course, we're, be we're more uh, endowed in the buttock area and generally the thigh area so that we have to buy them bigger to fit those areas. And then of course we have these gaping holes um, or gaping spaces in the back of um, the, the trouser or the, the, the pant. So yes, I had to do that for a number, actually for all of these, because as a former bodybuilding and fitness competitor, I have larger thighs. I also have a wider, broader back. So I generally, it's really safer if you want something as is evidenced by something else I'm going to show you, just get it bigger, just get it bigger and have it tailored down. Um, it's not that costly. Well, it depends though on how much you actually um, put into the purchasing the garment, if you wanna actually have it tailored or not. But with that denim look, I went with as an outer covering, this stunning, kimono from the 1860s. Now, where did I get a kimono from the 1860s? Yes, this is an original Japanese kimono. I have about four of them. It's so grand. The last I wore this one in particular uh, was for a recital that I did in Denver, Colorado. But she is just beautiful in a historical a historical find. Uh, I really love, um, as I said to you in the last video uh, where I introduced you to my stunning daughter, Alexis, that the both of us have a love for um, a a Eastern cultures, um, specifically the Korean culture, but also the Japanese culture, culture and Chinese cultures as well. So yes, we have a thing for the Eastern Asian culture. Um, the food, the clothing, it's just such a beautiful uh, people. They are such a beautiful people. And I, I just really respect um, their practices um, and how they live in a lot of ways. Some ways, no, of course not. I would never live there, um, especially in terms of um, not necessarily the subjugation of women, but just how women are treated in those countries are a little bit repressive for me. But yes, Kimono, kimono, kimono. I have a number of kimonos in my wardrobe. I will never get, this is really a collector's item. All of them I have ordered from Japan. One, I actually visited Japan and purchased there myself in person at a vintage shop in Japan. Um, in Tokyo in particular. Um, but this one I actually ordered fr directly from a retailer, a vintage retailer in Japan. Um, but she's just beautiful, right? Just stunning. I wish you could see the stitching inside and the, the, the gradation of the color there where it was specially dyed. Yeah. And just there, they're just wonderful details, just incredible details in kimonos that you can't really see, um, on the screen here, but you would have to really be up close and personal to really get the effect of how beautiful and how well constructed and just a, just a beautiful silhouette the um, kimonos are, the Japanese kimono in particular. So yes, uh, let me know what you think about that. And if you like um, any clothing or, or accessories from Eastern cultures yourselves, yeah? So what else did we accessorize with this look in terms of handbags and the shoes? I went with these just beautiful. It's like a cross between. So the, the platform itself is actually satin with these little and look at the heel there. Right. I've had these about 15 years. The top of the foot is velvet again with a satin um, embellished with flowers on the platform here with the stacked heel. She's just beautiful. This area is also velvet again velvet velvet and then this satin embroidered detailing on the heel and on uh around the um the platform itself and it's like a cross between a muted pink and a peach color which really brings out the peach highlights in the kimono 
almost going toward, you know, the orange family. And then, of course, because the denim is copper, it really, this orange handbag, this rust orange handbag really brings out the copper in the denim outfit, right? The denim set. She is beautiful. I have had this handbag in my collection, I think about 15, 16 years as well. And I think this one was, um, I purchased it in Paris uh, during a, a, a trip there. And this one is by Federica of Paris. And the leather on this bag is so stinking supple, just like butter, like butter on this bag. It also has a strap. As of course, it looks like, you know, just a satchel here, um, a deconstructed satchel. Um, this thing here, could you could kill someone with it. It's just built incredibly well. The craftsmanship of this bag is just beautiful. I don't think this, this is a brick and mortar, um, um, you know, that you could find any place else but in Paris because it was a boutique where I, I purchased it. But she's just beautiful. And yes, the key here does lock um, the bag proper, right? With the actual lock, which actually has the um, emblem of the retailer Federica by Paris, right? Just a beautiful bag. Again, I've had her about uh, 15, 16 years. Moving on, look number two. Look number two. And look number two, I went with what is seemingly just a basic, because um, you know, cropped pants are in again and trending. Again, I've always done cropped because as a short girl, I like to let my legs out a little bit and I have longer legs again in a short torso. So I love this style. These are actually from Zara. They are current. I will link them for you below. They have copious amounts of stretch to them. And um, again, as I said previously, I like to get them a little bit bigger, but then you have the problem of the gaping um, in the back buttock, uh, above the buttock area. So I actually have these beautiful little extenders, you know, that you can actually put your in your pants to pull them in without actually having to tailor them or um, sew them down yourself, right? Can you see that there? They work beautifully. They work beautifully. With these cropped shorts, denim shorts, yeah, with the cuff. I really like the cuff as well. Um, from Zara, again, I did this Zara leopard print sheer top. Again, it is cropped um, with this beautiful puffer sleeve to it and a gathered here. And it's a three quarter sleeve, yeah. And then gathers, right? I really love this top. It's beautiful, very dainty, very elegant. Moves, great movement to it, right? Again, cropped. I love crop tops because I have a short torso. I love cropped anything because I have a short torso. Um, so this was wonderful with that denim short, right? And I just had it buttoned up into the neck there, right? On the outer portion of this look, I did this Urban Revivo denim jacket. Now, it can be worn as a top or as a, a jacket. In this case, I actually styled it as a jacket. Again, just thrown over that beautiful billowy um, a leopard print crop top I just showed you. I like the sleeves on this top because they are so substantial and just made so very well. You can cuff them so that it adds a little flare on the bottom. But the detail of, look, you know, I love anything that's structured, yes. But the things that I, the, the features that I really like about this top is the way it pulls in that waist, right? Look at this. It's just cut that way. Just stunning. And it has pads, shoulder pads, for a really dramatic effect. So when you have shoulder pads in a garment, that really brings out those shoulders. Again, I have a wider back from 
uh, competing in bodybuilding and fitness for, for years, about 10 years I competed. Um, I really love how it just draws in that silhouette for me. Yes drawn in here for that contour that hourglass figure again but gives you that broad very dramatic demanding shoulder that is just just makes for a wonderful silhouette right this is again by urban revivo now i have to tell you i like the clothing at urban revivo but two tips for you when purchasing from them uh, if you have to return something, generally speaking, you're returning it at your own expense. They do not pay for return shipping. Um, so make sure you check the reviews, tip number two, and really go by what people um, tell you. I am actually a, I go, I go between a medium and a small, again, um, for some of the very reasons that I just expressed to you from competing for years, between a medium and a small. I purchased this in a large and it's still snug in the um, my my uh, waist area. So make sure if you purchase something from them, just know that you generally need to size up. Again, you can always tailor it down, but make sure you size up. And number two, just be sure that you read the reviews because they're generally accurate where Urban Revivo is concerned. This top and one that's very similar to it, very similar to it, um, is still available and I will link them both for you, but just know go up not one size, but go up two sizes. Okay. Just to be safe. But the material, this denim material is the best of the best. The only thing that I don't care for, and it's, it's, it's just a small gripe, um, is that there's no stretch to it, which is another reason why you should go up in size as opposed to getting your accurate true to si true size. Okay. So just be mindful of that when purchasing from Urban Revivo. And what accessories did I uh, pair with that ensemble? I went with, I got some treats for you. This bag, when you feel the construction of this, the material of this bag, and just how awesome it is, I actually purchased this one in this color. Um, with this, you know, this taupe and um, black color. It has wonderful stretch to this bag, so you can get a lot of stuff in it. I really love this. I got this from Amazon for 20 bucks. I also got it in black and white as well because I have so many things. Talk about a cute, well-made, uh, uh, for the money, the price is outstanding. So go check it out. Again, I'm gonna link these for you. I got it again. It came in three colors, um, this black and um, taupe caramel color, um, the black and white, and then it came in a green and pink color, but really stunning, very chic, very easy, very simple bag, deconstructed clutch for summer, right? And then I wore that um, ensemble, with that ensemble, I wore these beautiful blocked, patent leather studded around the footbed uh, sandal from Nine West. Now, when I tell you that these are in excellent condition, when I tell you how old they are, this is how great retailers, whether it's apparel or shoe wear, used to be compared to how they are now. These shoes are 22 years old, 22. They're all patent leather, real patent leather, not pleather. And the studs on here are just beautifully done. And yes, it's like this hard wood material, much in like a Dutch clog, right? And the footbed, the padding in the footbed is phenomenal. So these are, again, and it has like this really generous platform here, but these are stunning. Are they not? You can tell I've only worn these a couple times, right? But these are just beautiful. You can hurt somebody with these babies. Again, it's just that wood clog um, material that's made specifically um, out of like, you know, the Dutch clogs, right? Just beautiful, 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 beautiful. I'm so happy with these. These come with me wherever I go. I will not get rid of them. Again, these are by Nine West along with this. Wasn't this great? I love... Um, doing patterns, mixing patterns, I should say, 
love it. Isn't this great? I love the unexpected and doing something just a little whimsical and unexpected. Yeah? So let me know what you think about that. That was look number two. Moving on to look number three in our denim wear segment. Number three, I purchased this set from um, the Frankie store. Um, it was a little pricey, but I did get it on sale. And I know, and I wish I had not purchased it there. Was it the Frankie? I think it was. No, I'm sorry. I purchased this one at um, ASOS. At ASOS. I don't know if it's still available, but I also saw it at Fashion Nova. It's the exact same outfit. I saw it recently too at Fashion Nova. I'll link that one for you, but I'm pretty sure because I purchased this one almost mm, six months ago um, that this one is no longer available. And it's, you know, cargoes are in right now, right? Love the gathering on the ankle. And you can actually cinch it a couple times if you need to, but just really substantial, generous cargo denim, right? With the matching jacket. Again, your girl has a short torso, so I really like cropped jackets. And this one, uh, the belting around the wrist mimics the belting around the ankle of the trouser, the denim um, jeans right? Super cute. Really cute. Again, generous pockets, 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 pockets for days with that belting also on the shoulder area. You see that? Love a good crop jacket. I really like this entire look. I actually tried to style it with Two different pairs of soles, which I'll show you in just a moment. But I had this top under it. Believe it or not, this is a Martha Stewart top. I didn't even know Martha Stewart had a clothing line. Did you? Were you aware of that? Let me know. But this top, I actually saw one very similar at Zara um, some time ago. And I refused to purchase it because it was almost a hundred dollars darn near. I think it was like 89 99 or something like that. Something ridiculous. Um, but as you can tell, it is adorned with all of these beautiful rhinestones everywhere. Just beautiful. I have it gathered here because of how I wore a, it's wrinkled because of how I wore it, which you're looking at on the screen, right? And this baby was $14.99 at Marshall's, but just beautiful, great quality material, very easy, very lightweight. You could easily take this into summer, which I plan to do for my summer travels. But look at all of this detailing, this rhinestone detailing adorned on the front of the top. Again, I saw them at Zara for almost $100 and I wasn't doing it and lucked out and found this one at Marshall's for a cool $14.99. So yes, absolutely, right? So the accessories, what, what did we accessorize with this? For the soles, I actually, I tried to do it with this Franco Sardo boot, this Franco Sardo, Sardo booty, actually. The leather on these are a lambskin, very soft, very supple. Again, you know I love a great platform. And that leather goes all the way down through the um, stacked heel on this booty. And I really liked um, the cap toe here in black leather, right? It really reminds me of um, a Chanel shoe, right? And I also, you'll see the glasses in the video that I styled it with. Uh, it was just a great juxtaposition of the print on the glasses and the cap toe, the black cap toe on the boots here. But I thought that the boot was a bit too heavy for the look. Um, and if you are aware, there's a general rule that I really do believe in and I do subscribe to. If you have less on top, you can go heavier on the bottom and vice versa. So if you are heavy on the bottom, 
then, you know, you can, you know, again, just let, show some skin on, on top, right? You, you see what I'm saying? Um, but if, you, if, if you're doing heavy and heavy, unless it's summertime for light and light, but if you're doing heavy and heavy on the top and the bottom, it's overwhelming on the frame, especially if you're a short woman such as myself. Again, I'm only 5'2 and a half. Um, if you're a short woman, it can really be um, weigh the frame down and not elongate you and make you, it, it just, it, it, it'll um, look frumpy um, and not well thought out. Um, and it will just really swallow your silhouette or your frame. If you're taller, maybe you can get away with it. But if you're short, and I would say short, anything under five, three, I would say don't ever do heavy and heavy on top and bottom. Just reverse them. Just reverse them. So I actually did a few photos and videos in both shoes just to see the look for myself. But I really think that the the heel this Jessica Simpson heel, which you probably remember from my last shoe haul video just a few weeks ago. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. But this is a, a Jessica Simpson um, pump in satin. Remember, I was telling you, if you have satin heels to make sure you scotch guard them before wearing them so as not to get them dirty. I sat in a um, uh, scotch guard all of my material um, shoes to make sure that they just stay clean and you can just wipe them down. But this is a beautiful ivory pump. The ivory satin comes also down on the heel there. But the thing, the feature that I really love about these heels is the anklet, right? With this cute little rhinestone disco ball on it. How sexy is that? Just to lighten that look up a bit. Also, because that cargo pant, the, the denim pant, because it has so many pockets on it, right? It also added to the weight of the look. All those pockets, not just on the, the pant itself, but also on the crop jacket. Pockets and pockets and pockets for days, which means what? More material, more material. So you want to lighten that look up some by doing something that's more dainty and lighter um, and just uh, less heavy on the bottom if you're going to be doing a look that is stacked on top. So I ended up going with this shoe instead. And it also matches the top beautifully, right? Look at that. What a great look. And just really, it also elevates the look, right? Because of course, denim can come across as very industrial, very utilitarian. And if you want to just make it a little more feminine, you just add daintier, more dainty accessories to the look, right? So I went with this cute little leather um, satchel. It comes with a strap for crossbody and shoulder wear if you so choose, especially because it's a denim look. You can totally do that. Um, and then with these Jessica Simpson heels. So there you have it. Our three looks today in denim. Let me know. I try to dress denim up a little bit. I don't do a lot of denim. I do have some, but I just don't. I'm not really a denim girl. It just comes from my background of singing classically. We could never show up to auditions and things like that in denim. You just, it was just a no, no. You just didn't do it. Um, unless you're like getting on a plane or something like that and you want to be comfortable. But you know, there was a time even in air travel that you dressed up to travel, not like today where folks show up at the airport in pajamas and what have you. So yes, which I, I would never do. It's like sacrilege to me. I mean, it, I, I, I could just never, I don't understand how people do it. But yes, denim, denim, denim. We try to give it a twist for you today with um, a, an Asian influence on one with that copper metallic look and the kimono. Yes. Um, yes, with this corset, right? This bustier and that beautiful copper color from Mango. And then we did the um, Zara and Urban Revivo look with the shorts, right? And then again, the cargo look from 
ASOS. Again, I have seen the entire outfit uh, on Fashion Nova, which I don't shop very much. I happen to run across it on Instagram. Um, yes, so there you have it. Those are my three denim looks for you today. Let me know which was your favorite or more. But thank you so very much for joining me on this episode of Suits Souls by EPP. And don't forget to head on over to Instagram and follow me there at Suits Souls by EPP. But until we meet again, I'm bientôt.